So in an early holiday present for golf fans and golf lovers everywhere, Tiger was not only competed a couple weeks ago in the Hero World Challenge, he is in the field with his son Charlie at the PNC Championship this week. Now we know a couple weeks ago he put in a brand new TaylorMade driver, a QI10 LS driver. And that got me thinking about some of the golf equipment that Tiger Woods has used over the years, really since he turned pro back in 1997. In this video, I'm going to take you into the Wayback Machine and show you some very, very rare photos of Tiger Woods golf equipment going all the way back to that time period, all the way up until today. I promise there's some photos and some things here you have either forgotten or you never even knew. So if you're a fan of Tiger Woods and you like seeing classic gear, this video is absolutely going to be for you. Let's get into it. Okay, so for those of you who may not be aware, I'm going to start off with this image right here. Tiger Woods wasn't always in Nike golf equipment. He wasn't always in TaylorMade golf equipment. Um, going way back to his amateur days, this photo here being taken when he was winning one of his three U.S. amateur championships, you'll notice that driver, which is a little bit tough to make out, that is a Cobra driver. And specifically, that is a, um, a Cobra deep face driver. Now, he also used this driver to win the 1997 Masters. And you'll notice... It's absolutely tiny. By today's standards, that would basically be a three wood. It is stainless steel. It is uh, certainly in the days way before we were getting into titanium. You'll notice that there is a steel shaft that is on there. Uh, this is a very, very difficult driver by today's standards to control, but Tiger Woods was probably the most elite driver of the golf ball uh, in the world at that point. And he was able to make that Cobra deep face driver work. If we go on then to the next photo, you're going to see the irons that Tiger Woods had in his bag when he was winning some of his earliest championships. Again, including that 1997 Masters win. Yes, yeah, so those are Mizuno irons. Specifically, those are Mizuno MP29s. Um, the Actually, the yeah, the MP29s were the 2, 3, and the 4. And then the MP14s were the 5 iron through the pitching wedge. And those wedges... Um, he had a 56 and a 60 back in that day, and those were Cleveland 588 RTGs. Now, those are absolutely just dialed-in classic muscle-back blade irons with a very, um, sh a very standard shape, a shape that we are going to see throughout this video that Tiger would say is really, really true to. He doesn't uh, really change the look of his irons, either in the address position or the positioning of that muscle. Um, he did obviously at that point split his set. A lot of players nowadays do that almost all the time, but back in the day, it was very common for players to use a three iron through pitching wedge that were all the same iron. So in, in some ways, Tiger Woods is a little bit ahead of his time going with the two, three, four in a slightly easier to hit. And I use that term very loosely, slightly, uh, that MP 29 was a little bit beefier than the MP 14. And he could get those long irons up in the air and control them a little bit better from distance. Again, the, the 588 RTG is a classic wedge. Cleveland still is putting out um, 588-shaped wedges. They have a, a, a large number of wedges now in 2023, but that teardrop shape is an absolute classic, and it's something that's carried over, as you're going to see, throughout much of Tiger Woods' career. Um, if we then go on to the next image, we're going to start to get into some of the title of stuff that uh, Tiger Woods used relatively briefly in his career, and this set of irons specifically is rather famous. This is a Titleist 681T series iron, and these irons specifically are the ones that have been sold a couple times at auction, um, most recently in 2022, for a little over $5 million. This is the set that Tiger Woods used to win the Tiger Slam, four consecutive major championships. Um, there's a whole lot of back and forth about the authenticity of it. Tiger's agent, Mark Steinberg, has come out and said that the, the ones that were sold at auction are not the genuine article, that Tiger Woods has those irons in his house. Um, two of uh, Titleist uh, senior PGA Tour reps who were working for titles at the time both adamantly will vouch that these are actually the irons, the ones that were sold at auction. They 100% uh, verify that. Um, other services have verified their level of authenticity. Um, so you can sort of read into it what you will. Again, Tiger and his folks deny that they were sold at auction. He claims he has them. Everybody else basically out there is saying that, no, he did give them away at the Westchester uh, Classic many, many years ago when he was transitioning into some new title of stuff. Um, but that's sort of where it is. That then takes me to this. And this is going to be stuff that now I think a lot of golf fans will start to really get into. Um, these are the irons that Tiger Woods, this particular picture, um, I'm fast forwarding a few iterations in a few years. But now we're into the Tiger Woods VR Forged blade days and this gets i think to be really fun at this point now a couple things i want to tell you about specifically in this this shot the head covers um 
Frank the head cover, if you haven't had a chance to go into YouTube and check out some of the commercials where Frank appears in Nike commercials, it is absolutely fantastic. Really, really funny stuff. You should definitely check it out. We've, we've seen the tiger head cover, obviously, for a long, long time. Some people may not be aware of what that bird is. That is a kiwi. And Steve Williams, who was a caddy for Tiger Woods for a long time, certainly during his really big stretch of major championships in the early 2000s, um, and then throughout early 20, uh, 2010, I believe it was, when they, they finally broke things off. From New Zealand, that is a kiwi. That is a nod to, uh, to his caddy, Steve Williams, right there. Um, the irons themselves are, the VR stood for Victory Red, um, and that was sort of the line that, that came through. Now I want to move on to the golf ball. You can see this is a really interesting one and a little bit of information about Tiger Woods golf ball. This is a, um, a Tiger Woods version, basically, of the Nike Tour 1 golf ball. Tiger Woods golf balls, when he puts them in competition, he almost always, if I'm not mistaken, plays a, a number one still to this day. Um, he has Tiger stamped on the side of it. Sort of famously, Tiger Woods really doesn't autograph golf balls. I have seen a few of them out there, but that is something that he by and large avoids. I know he does tons of autograph stuff um, that goes on to shirts and hats and posters and all the, those kinds of different things. Not a big guy in terms of uh, autographing golf balls, but, but that is a golf ball from back in the day. Now we're going to move on to what is probably the most famous putter in golf. You can call it Excalibur. You can call it the Elder Wand. You hear golf equipment junkies talking about it in all different kinds of ways. This is Tiger Woods Newport 2 GSS. Now, GSS stands for German Stainless Steel, and it is an exceptionally soft material that uh, Scotty Cameron uses for putters that are only going to be uh, put out on the PGA Tour, the LPGA, the DP World Tour, etc. German stainless steel is not brought to retail because it is exceptionally expensive. And according to Cameron, when he told me about it, the average retail person would not be able to tell the difference between the 303 stainless steel that is used in retail putters and GSS. But elite tour players can feel the difference. And so Tiger has used this putter for a couple of decades. But as you will see as we go through this video, there have been many other putters that have sort of very quietly slid into his bag. Now, um, this is not the putter that he used to win the 1997 Masters. That was um, a Newport Terillium 3 or TEI 3 putter. It was a dark uh, finish with a bunch of sort of snowflakey white dots on the back of it and a, a sort of a bright copper colored it's Terillium insert. But this is the putter that I think most people are really going to associate Tiger Woods with. Now, you'll notice that there is a red dot, obviously, in the front in the heel. And then as we move into this image, um, there's another red dot in the back. Well, what are those red dots? Tiger wanted the putter to be just a little bit lighter after everything got finished with it. And so in order to lighten it up um, without really changing or modifying the shape, Cameron went ahead and bored out a very small hole in the heel and a very small uh, hole, just removing just a tiny bit of material, just a couple of grams um, in those areas. And in the address position, you do not see those holes. Yet it became, from a marketing standpoint, something fantastic because he filled them in with red. It became very iconic. Obviously, we can see that there's Tiger Woods written on the bumpers. Um, it is something that people immediately identify as this is Tiger Woods putter and, and they know that's the one. Lots of dings, lots of markups on it. Um, it is something that he occasionally will add a little bit of lead tape to the back when he's playing at the British Open or at golf courses where there are especially slow greens. Um, he has said in many cases that slow greens are a challenge to him, which is why when I saw this putter um, at the 2010 British Open at St. Andrews, it immediately caught my attention because you'll notice that that is a method putter. That is a Nike method at the 2010 um, British Open, and this is now a little bit better photograph taken a year or two later, but it's the exact same putter. So the Nike Method putters were um, really classically shaped putters. Tiger Woods put one into play for a little while. Rory McIlroy also had one, and the real sort of buzz about them was that, as you can see here, they had a polymer that went up from the bottom, um, and then was extruded out the front, and then that was fly milled off, and the, Ideally, you had the softness of the polymer, but the edges of the grooves were maintained so that it would help to get the ball rolling a little bit faster. Tiger put this putter into play um, in 2010. It was sort of here and there. But I want you to sort of take a look as we sort of zoom in just a little bit on those grooves. Because as I was holding on to this putter, um, I believe I took this photograph of the 2013 PGA Championship in Rochester, New York, Oak Hill. 
Um, that's a very different face than the one that was sold at retail, which is probably not surprising. Many of the world's best players have slightly altered or prototype versions of the retail stuff that you and I would, would go in and buy because there are no grooves, um, or I should say groove edges that you can see that are visible right in through here. Those, um, black markings, I used to think, and a lot of people were, were of the opinion that they just were drawn on in Sharpie. That's not the case. Um, there was definitely some type of a polymer that was in place there, but the groove edges, which was really sort of the, the selling technology of the method family of putters, they, they were not there. Um, and so Tiger, again, did have a method putter, but his method putter was quite different than the method putter that most people would be getting. Now this putter then really caught my attention. This is at the 2011 Masters and Tiger Woods is on the practice screen here using this small mallet putter that is again a Nike method. So the idea of Tiger Woods going to a mallet um, really threw a lot of people for a loop at this point. So it, it was again a very blade-like mallet to, to be fair, but again something different from the Scotty Cameron Newport GSS that has basically just become synonymous with Tiger Woods stuff over the years. That putter did not stay in the bag for very long. Um, as we transition on, I take you into some of the irons. This is a VR Pro. Uh, in this case, it's a five iron that I photographed. Um, if you take a look at this shape for the VR Pro, the Tiger Woods Club from, this is again, talking like 2012, 2013, and comparing to those Mizunos from the beginning of the video, from a shape standpoint, this is very, very similar. It's a very classic muscle black blade, virtually no offset, very, very thin top line, narrow sole. Um, what we didn't know at this time and what came out later is that Tiger Woods has a small hole punched into the toe section when the clubs were still in the raw steel phase. It had a little bit of tungsten inserted into the toe and then the chrome finish is applied over the top. So it was never visible. Um, that technology we'll sort of get into in just a little bit longer when, in a little bit later in this video because Nike is going to take advantage of that fact. But the idea is that Tiger is trying to offset the weight of the hosel by adding more weight out into the toe. And that's going to pull the ideal hitting area, the sweet spot, more into the center of the face. Um, again, very ahead of his time in, as far as doing that. High levels of customization, really precise building. Um, this is now Tiger Woods' bag um, at that same championship. This is Oak Hill 2013. And as you can see, we're now talking about a lot of Covert, uh, the VR Covert and Covert Pro family of Woods. As you can see, and perhaps as you might be able to remember, the Covert family of Woods from Nike had a very, very unique shaping. Um, in the middle of the, both the drivers and the fairway woods, there was basically just a hole. And the idea was to put more weight into the perimeter, take weight out of the middle. You really wouldn't do that um, these days. Most manufacturers are really big on throwing a lot of weight into the middle and the back because it really boosts the moment of inertia, the MOI, and increases stability. Back at this point, Nike was trying to add more weight to the sides, um, but that weight was going to be forward. So um, theoretically, it should have helped to increase ball speed and give Woods a, a little bit more distance, um, but it was a little bit shaky. And these, these clubs, by modern standards, do not have very high MOI there, but they would, in the hands of, uh, of a really good player like Tiger, allow him to shape the ball around. You can see a very, very deep face. Um, that red was, was pretty interesting, and Tiger is still at this point into a bonded hosel, meaning that there is no adjustable hosel mechanism for Tiger. As we take a look into the wedges that were in that set, um, this VR Pro wedge has a very, very interesting sort of a deep C grind um, with a bunch of bounce way back, and there actually is a little bit of bounce forward. Tiger Woods is very particular about his wedge bounces, especially in the 56 and the 60. Um, he likes the benefit of having bounce when he wants it, but as you also notice in this photograph, there's a significant amount of material that's been cleared out of both the heel and the toe section. That allows him to open up the face and slide the leading edge underneath the ball on a very, very tight lie. But at the same time, he can play this wedge from a square position if he wants to hit a chip shot and keep it down. So a very, very versatile, but also very demanding uh, setup as far as Tiger Woods wedges. Now, moving on to this next photo, this is one that I bet a lot of you have never seen. This is from 2015 at the Players' Championship, um, TPC Sawgrass, and Tiger Woods is using a Nike VRS forged driving iron. Now, this is a prototype that was made for him, and... What's interesting about this is that the VRS Forged was 
a better player distance iron. As you can see, it had quite a bit of beef on it, so it was very stable. It was designed to get the ball up in the air. It was a sort of an early better player distance iron, sort of game improvement iron kind of a club. But as you can see, there's a lot of corrosion around that back badge. This one has been made especially for Tiger, and it is a long iron that's something that he can use off the tee. This would have been something he would have loved to have probably used when he would hit a stinger. Um, the loft on this is probably something like a two iron or a three iron. And this was a club that in this time period, again, in the mid 2000 teens, Tiger Woods would swap this club in and maybe take the five wood out being basically course dependent. Okay, now that this next photograph gets really interesting. These are Vaporfly Pro Nike irons. Um, these debuted while Tiger Woods was injured. He was injured obviously through much of the, his career here. Um, this is where we bring that tungsten waiting story that I told you about earlier in this video where Tiger Woods took his VR uh, Pro blades and had a little bit of tungsten thrown out in the heel. Well, at this point now, Nike is bringing that to all of its um, irons. And you might remember that many of the players, again, Roy McIlroy, Francesco Molinari, Brooks Kepka, they all went into these irons. Um, and Tiger Woods is a big reason why that design philosophy was, was basically brought through the whole thing. That was what Vaporfly... Um, was all about. Now, Tiger Woods had this set of irons made and he used them, but not for very long because obviously this photograph here is taken in 2015 when he started playing. The irons came out in 2014, um, but Tiger transitioned in, into 2015. In 2016, um, Nike announces that they're getting out of the golf equipment business. No more clubs, balls, um, no more golf bags. They're going to strictly be apparel and footwear. So Tiger's really not in these irons for all that long. So then post Nike, um, December 2016, Tiger Woods signs a golf ball deal with Bridgestone. And this package came uh, to my house in December of 2016. And Tiger Woods announces that he's going to Bridgestone. He's gonna be playing the Tour B330S golf ball. Now, what a lot of people may not be aware of is that Bridgestone had manufactured balls for Nike for a long time. And Tiger basically came out and said, look, Bridgestone has been making my golf ball for a couple of decades. So signing officially with Bridgestone was something that he felt very comfortable with. He knew the people at Bridgestone. He, they understood him. He understood them. Transitioning into Bridgestone for him, uh, he said, was, was very, very easy. The B330S was designed for the fastest swinging players, but it was the spinnier version. There was also a B330. Um, now, Tiger Woods has been playing Bridgestone golf balls ever since. There's been a little bit of back and forth about exactly which one he has used most recently. Um, earlier this season in 2023, Tiger Woods, in an attempt to get a little bit more speed and distance since the back fusions and the, uh, the fusing of some of the vertebrae in his back, he has switched over to uh, the Tour B uh, golf ball, the straight Tour B golf ball. He had been playing the Tour BS, um, which is again the spinnier version, but as he's trying to get more distance, as he's trying to keep up with the other players out there, he has gone with a longer distance ball. I talked to the folks at Bridgestone, they confirmed that with me. He first put it in at Riviera this year, and it's basically been staying there. He has been playing that ball um, at the Hero World Challenge, and I would imagine he's probably going to stick with that ball. Shortly after that, we get the announcement that Tiger Woods has signed with TaylorMade. And this is an image of Tiger Woods using a, uh, an M2 driver.
to stop me dead in my tracks. And I bet you probably haven't seen this one. This is Tiger Woods at that same tournament. Again, 2018, TPC Boston, and he is in full-on search mode looking for a putter, something I think a lot of us thought we would never, ever see. Tiger Woods was not putting well. The Scotty Cameron was being benched. And here he was with a couple of tailor-made putters, um, basically trying to find something that he can put into play. That's Keith Zabarbro squatting down there. Um, at this point, I think that he's the head of tour promotions for TaylorMade. He has since moved up, and I believe that he is now a VP uh, in terms of uh, tour promotions for TaylorMade. He is the one who was at the Hero World Challenge just a couple weeks ago, helping Tiger Woods dial into his new driver. But at this point, Tiger Woods was looking around for new putters, trying out this blade, trying out the small mallet, and eventually what he ends up using that week and for a few tournaments afterwards is this tailor-made Ardmore, which is sort of a winged back, uh, small mallet putter. He had some levels of success with it. It stuck around for a little while. Um, eventually that Ardmore though does get benched and Tiger Woods, as you can see in this photograph from 2019, uh, at the Northern Trust Championship at Liberty National Golf Club in New Jersey, the Scotty Cameron putter is back at this point and Tiger Woods is fully into uh, tailor-made stuff. He's got uh, 13 tailor-made clubs, including an M5 driver, an M5 three-wood. He's still sticking with the M3 and the five-wood, um, but now we also have, uh, from his irons, these are the um, P7 TWs. So that prototype set, that phase one, eventually becomes P7 TW, and that has not changed. Uh, he is still playing P7 TW irons, and you can still get those clubs from tailor-made. And again, that iron... Uh, in terms of its shape, its weighting, uh, all the different playing attributes about it really has not changed. X100s from True Temper have been his iron shaft throughout his entire career. That has not changed either. Um, so again, we're going into some different wedges now. We get into uh, the milled grind stuff. Well, again, with that specific TW, Tiger Woods grind, uh, a little bit of bounce forward, then a flat second section, and then uh, a buffered off trailing edge. So three distinct sections within the TW grind uh, in the tailor-made wedges, and those have carried all the way through milled grind two, MG3, and now even MG4 as well. Here we see Tiger Woods playing at the 2023 Masters. He initially moved into Stealth early at the PNC Championship. Um, he then moved into Stealth two. Um, one of the things that was really interesting to me though nowadays is that this is a picture of Scotty Scheffler and I put him in there because Scotty Scheffler wears the Nike Tiger Woods footwear. But as of now, as a lot of you who have reached this point in this video would be very well aware, Tiger for the most part is wearing FootJoy footwear um, through the complications with the car crash, the knee surgeries, the leg surgeries, his stability needs evidently are still not able to be met by some of the Nike footwear that is available. We have started to see some prototype things, him, him wearing a dark colored shoe that really didn't have any corporate logos or signage on it. Um, but he has been wearing uh, essentially Tom, the FootJoy Premier series of footwear basically for the last couple of years, anytime he's out on the golf course. So uh, it's sort of interesting that Scotty Scheffler is wearing the Tiger Woods stuff, but Tiger Woods is for the most part wearing FootJoy. And finally, the last picture that I'm going to end up with is pretty much the most recent one. This is Tiger Woods using a TaylorMade QI10 LS driver. Now, as of today, when I'm filming this, the QI10 LS has not been released, but I think that it's pretty safe to say that we don't have to probably wait very long to see this driver be put into play. We know that uh, Scotty Scheffler is there, uh, Rory McIlroy, Tommy Fleetwood, many of the TaylorMade staff players have already obviously been fit, Tiger Woods among them. He is using the QI10 LS driver. Uh, in his, his case, he's got a little bit different shaft in there than, than he has used in the past. That's a Graphite Design Tour ADVF shaft. Um, early in his career, Tiger Woods was pretty exclusively into the Mitsubishi Diamana stuff. Um, he then used Ventus, uh, specifically Ventus Blue, uh, in some of his Stealth and Stealth 2 drivers, uh, but now going with Graphite Design most recently. So we'll see if he sticks around with that uh, going forward as we progress into 2024.
So look, I hope you enjoyed going through many, many years and a lot of really cool rare photographs of Tiger Woods golf equipment. It was a blast to go through some of my files and to find some of these things that brought back a lot of memories. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, it would be fantastic if you would consider subscribing to my channel as well as hitting the bell button so you can get notifications when I've got new content coming out. Um, with 2024 right around the corner, we are looking for enormous releases, big new things coming out from all the biggest manufacturers. Lots and lots of new products on the way. You are not going to want to miss it. So thanks very much. And uh, I look forward to talking to you guys and seeing you guys real soon.